I was on board the Olympic with George Bryan, a young geology professor who had located what he believed to be a rich vein of uranium in an underwater cave. He had been working on the project for many months and now needed professional help. His wife Susie had helped him in the original exploration, but he didn't want to take any more risks with her. Deep sea caves are tricky business and strictly not for amateur divers. Also on board was Brian Skipper, a likable old sea dog that everybody called Pop. Good luck, boys. I'll have a nice hot meal ready for you when you come up. Good luck to you, Pop. Equipped with water-tested Geiger counters, we took off to recheck and resurvey the potential uranium field. the area of the cave, we activated our Geiger counters. We immediately picked up a faint signal, which kept getting stronger as we proceeded. This was good news. The strong signals were leading us straight to Brian's uranium find. There she was, the cave, like a big craggy jaw, waiting to snap at anything that came along. Our Geigers were now chattering like a couple of magpies. Brian was right. This was a real hot cave that he'd found. Brian was eager and excited and headed straight for the opening. As he did, I felt a slight jar and heard a low, distant rumble. Suddenly, loose rocks and shale started cascading down the mouth of the cave. And then there was a sharp report, a loud roar, a swirl of muddy water and a violent turbulence sent me spinning. Tons of debris and rocks crashed down in the cave's entrance. We had been hit by the brute force of an underwater landslide. The force of the underwater landslide gradually slacked off, and I looked for Brian. He had disappeared. He could only be in one place. The turbulence had swept him into the cave. The cave was completely blocked and sealed by a huge rock. In a sort of foolish desperation, I tugged at the rock. No use like trying to budge Gibraltar. I saw Brian in an eerie sort of half light, lying there helpless, trapped. I flashed my light at him, hoping to get some sort of recognition. Finally, he signaled back, but it was obvious that he was pinned down, his legs buried under heavy rocks, one arm useless. There was just one ray of hope. His breathing gear appeared to be okay. I was doing him no good down there, so I headed for the surface. Brian knew the situation that he was in, poor devil. In less than an hour, 
Susie would no longer be his wife. She'd be his widow. He had less than 46 minutes of air left. You got any big hooks aboard? Nothing like that, Mike. Only the heavy anchors. I've been frying up the county codes. What about a ship to shore radio? Well, sure, we have everything. Electricity, fancy plumbing. They like the old days, Mike. Where is that radio? Off the board in the wheelhouse. That fish about six miles away, isn't it? Yeah, about that. What frequency is the pier radio on? We're already on it. Olympic 542 calling the pier. Come on on pier. Olympic 542 calling the pier. Come on in pier. What's happened? Where's Brian? He's in trouble. Underwater landslide. Olympic 542 calling the pier. Come on in pier. Come on in pier. Is he hurt? I wish it were only that. He's trapped. Olympic 542. This is the pier. Come in, Olympic 542. This is Nelson. Mike Nelson. I'm on board the Olympic. Brian's boat. B for boy. R-Y-A-N. Brian. Now listen to me. I didn't have time to do much explaining. I talked fast and convinced the pier manager that all out speed was vital. I told him to beg, borrow, or steal a couple of big hooks and to get them to me right now. I briefed him quickly about Brian and hoped that I'd made him realize how desperate the situation was. This is very important. You get him over here as fast as you can. It's that bad, huh, Mike? It's real bad, Pop. Can I help? Yeah, sure. Plenty. As soon as that boat gets here, oh, we better clear the decks so we'll get ready to move fast, huh? We'll make it, son. We better. <laughs> Be here by now. You'll be here any minute, son. You know what to do now. As soon as it comes alongside. Right. There she is now. Yeah, that's them, all right. All right, now listen, Pop. When I find that cave, I'll send up one of these flares. In the split second you see it, come on over and drop those hooks, huh? Right. But give me plenty of slack now, remember? Plenty of slack. Okay. I send up the other flare. I want a strong, steady pull. Strong, steady. Don't yank it too hard, huh? No. Slow pull. Right. Slow you got pull. it? Yeah, I got it. The man at the pier had done a fine job. Only 14 minutes had elapsed since I had radioed him. When I saw the girl, I knew immediately that it was Brian's wife. She knew that her husband was in grave trouble. She was already in her diving gear. You got another one like that? Yeah, Mike. You go with Pop, huh? Okay. You Mrs. Brian? Yes. Yeah. Yeah, that's her. I'm Mike Nelson. He's in that cave, isn't he? Yeah. There was an underwater landslide. How much air has he got left? I want the truth. About 30 minutes. Does he have a chance? If we hurry. How are you doing with those hooks, Pop? Coming along. I'm going with you. No. I do this alone. Take less Mr. time. Mr. Nelson. I'm going with you. All right. Here. Maybe you can't help with that. If you like, huh? Let's go. I really didn't want Susie down there with me. I had to move fast and surely, and I felt that I could do it better alone. 
that I just couldn't refuse her. It could have been her last chance to see her husband alive. cave, the slide had quieted down completely. The water, fortunately, was clear and calm. Brian appeared to be weakening, but at least he was alive and conscious. possible to get a firm bite on the rock. Where it didn't crumble, it was slippery, and there wasn't time enough to drill into it. finally managed to get a mild hole on the rock. I sent up the flare. I guess Susie sent up a prayer. When the hooks broke loose, I knew that it nearly broke Susie's heart. It was rough. There were the two of them, no more than 20 feet apart. It might as well have been 20 miles. I understood her feelings as she tried to force her way through the impossibly small opening to get to her husband. I just had to be rough with her. Before I could calm her down, she had fouled up her air intake. We had to share mine. got caught down there. Wrecked her hose. She'll be all right. What about Brian? Oh, those hooks will never grab that rock. That gear of mine, where'd you stow it? In the forward forecastle. Take it easy. 
Take it easy. Take it easy. <laughs> Yeah. I brought it along in case I do some blasting in the cave. You want to try to tear the rock loose? That's right. Kind of risky, ain't it? I'm going to set the charges in just the right place so the rock will absorb most of the concussion. It's an awful responsibility, ain't it, son? You got any other suggestion? We can't just sit here while that man's life ticks away down there, can we? No other way? I can't think of any other way. Brian's pinned. He can't help me put that line around the rock. We had a problem like this in the Seabees once. We figured it out with some small animals. What are you talking about? Yeah, with gophers. Gophers, what do you mean? Well, we had to put some heavy cable through long lengths of small pipe. Yeah? Yeah. We just tied light lines onto the gophers and sent them through. Real crazy idea, but it's better than dynamiting. Pop, cut me off about 12 feet of that fishing line of yours, huh? Come on, quick, quick. Hurry up, Pop. There, hold on. Give me the line. Hold him tight now. I got him. Easy, son, easy. That's got it. My spear gun, Pop. Hey. That's the same deal as before. When you see the flare, you pull. Okay. What's he doing now, Pop? Is there still a chance? As long as you keep trying, there's always a chance, Susie. And he's trying. He's always trying. If Pop could use a small animal to carry a light line through a small pipe, maybe I could do the same thing with a little fish. If only I could use the fish as a messenger to bring a small line around that rock, then I'd have a way to haul the heavy line through, and I'd have a fighting chance to move the rock. I signaled to Brian, hoping that he was still alive. He still was. We still had a chance, a bleak one, but a chance. Tied the heavy line to the light one. From past experience, I knew that some fish are attracted by light, and I wanted to attract this one my way real bad. I had to get that line. He came nearer. I reached out to grab him, but he was too fast for me. There was only one way left. I had to spear him. First shot had to be it. Time was short and Brian was getting weaker. I took dead aim.
all right, won't they, Mike? Oh, sure. Now, one leg of this might give him a little trouble, but he can take it. Pretty durable character, that husband of yours. As soon as I'm up and about, I'm gonna call you again, Mike. That uranium is still there. Uh, see what I mean? I don't think I'll ever eat another fish as long as I live. Maybe the one that saved my life. The fish that saved your life is Mike Nelson. You're passing out awards, Susie. Pop is the one that should get it. Now, prior to the Navy. I wasn't in the Navy. I was in the CBs, the best construction outfit in the whole service. Right, son? Right, Buck. <laughs> I'll be back next week at this same time with another sea hunt story. Plan to be with us again, huh? Mm -hmm.